Welcome to the card market feature match where Yemen and I, and sometimes very exciting guests, play paper magic against each yes, other. Yes, we do, but uh, right now there's no exciting guests. Just us. It's, it's, Don't leave though. We've got very exciting decks lined up for you. Uh, you picked yours from the comments. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> and if you want to see a specific deck list in any future episode, modern, pioneer, or whatever, uh, just leave it in a comment down there below. Ideally, just the full 75 as as a comment. We can copy paste it. And while you're down there, uh, there's a sub button. If it doesn't say you're already subbed, please click it. Uh, it doesn't much to you. It just means you see Torah Sever and explain magic facts to you every once in a while. But uh, to us, it means the world. Yeah, but for now, we'll get into the games. So Yemen and I, we love Pioneer. We decided we were playing some Pioneer, but we also love playing decks from the comments. People submit some creative decks sometimes. So as scrolling down, looking for a comment for a deck to play, and Bumblebee OVG left, oh my God, my heart swooned. The mid-range goodness that is in this Naya mid-range deck, oh. Chef's kiss. For every new set, Card Market Inside has a bunch of deck techs released over the weeks of, you know, previews and then also throughout release. Discussing new cards in old decks, new cards in new decks, old decks in new cards. No, that doesn't make any sense. But one of them caught my attention, which was Mono Black Devotion. Uh, that deck has been around before, but with the new card Shale Dread, uh, you basically get to combo by including Peer Into the Abyss in your deck. That also combos with Underworld Dreams. And you know, that's kind of just a spicy spin on things. You also get uh, to play the new Sleeper, the one mana one one. The deck looks awesome. I hope I get to pull the combo off against Carl and just, you know, make him draw half his library. So we're playing a lot of big stuff, but to get there, we have Mana Dorks. It's Naya, it's Midrange. We have Elvish Mystic, we have Llanowar Elves. We're also playing Prosperous Innkeeper. A lot of ways to just cheat on mana really early. And then we pump out really fun stuff. Uh, you've got the classics, you've got Fable of the Mirror Breaker, you've got Voice of Resurgence, but then we also knew from New Capenna, never even seen this card before, I think. We're playing Feet Foot Dancer. It's a 4-4 four -four for four, has Vigilance, Lifelink, Trample, it does everything. And it does nothing at the same time. Oh, I can't wait to play with it. And also, randomly, there's a bunch of Planeswalkers in this deck. We have Vivian on the Hunt. We have Vivian Monsters Advocate. We have a Domery. It's just so much goodness. We're also topping off at an Elder Galgaroth. It's just a bunch of good cards and the lands to play them. Yeah, man, I feel like this question used to always have an answer. And recently, no more. Do, does it not have an answer anymore? No, it doesn't. That, well, okay, it has an answer. But it's always been the same. Uh, do you have a companion? Uh, would you like me to fake check? Or should I just say no? I want to see your best fake check. No, I don't have oh, any. Oh, that's a classic <laughs> Yaman. I don't have any what either. What a joke. <laughs> what a jokester you are. Um, then would you like to roll some dice? Uh, I would like to roll some dice. There is always an answer to that one. Yeah. Six, that's so low. Uh, uh, I'll go first with my eight. All right, sure you will. All right, let's go. This hand, apart from the fact that it needs a second swamp, but I'll get there, I'm on the draw, uh, has everything. It's got one drop, one devotion, two drop, two devotion, Nyxos, Liliana. It's got everything and more, I love it. Okay, we're gonna need the mana to get there, but we have two Elder Gargaroth. I don't know what Yaman's playing, but Elder Gargaroth just steamrolls over about anything. So we're gonna keep it. We need the lands, but the po the power is there. I will keep this. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh. I, I do not like how eager you are <laughs> about this hand. Well, you may love your hand, but I love going first. I'm gonna take two, and I'm gonna cash net. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna cash it. I'm gonna cast the Elvish Mystic. You do realize that Winoda's banned. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my turn? Yes, that's your turn. All right, I'll untap. Orborg is not a swamp per definition, but it's untapped. It lets me cast everything in perfect draw. Perfect land. I'll play a swamp and I'll cast a Warlock class. You're gonna have to give that one a read, Yaman. Yeah, Warlock class. Uh, so it's a, it's a class enchantment, so I gain, can level it up. At level one, uh, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. Level two, when this class becomes level two, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Level three for seven mana. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. Wow. For now, let's check if a creature died this turn. It didn't. No. Go ahead. <laughs> First, I'll hit you for one. All right, down to 19. And then I'll tap two. 
and play a Prosperous Innkeeper. Liliana just lost a lot of her power by Carl deploying that Innkeeper because, yeah, now he can just sacrifice a 1-1. One, one. Oh man, you're ramping hard. It comes along with a, you thought I brought an extra deck? No, these are my tokens. <laughs> It comes along with a treasure. I know that there's more upside to playing Voice of Resurgence here, especially against a deck that probably has a lot of removal, but uh, look at our hand. It's all four and five drops, and we only have two lands on the board. So we do need to develop our mana here. We can't use the treasure on Voice just yet. That is a super scary start, honestly. Uh, I can't cast any of these Winotas in my hand, though. So all right. I'll pass the turn to you. All right, I'll untap. I'll take my draw, and that's a Good one. I will play an Urborg. Oh, thank you for the swaps. Yeah, no worries. And then I'll cast a Gifted Ether Boar. That blocks for days. It does block for days. Well, hopefully not. I don't want to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine we're in some cyclical hell where I can never attack into your Gifted Ether Boar. <laughs> it just blocks every time. Go ahead, Carl. All right, I'm going to tap. I'll draw. Yeah, I mean, this deck is sweet. I, I just want to cast all the cards in my hand. <laughs> uh, but I will limit myself to taking two and just casting, oh no. Could have been anyone, but it's this one. Oh my I'll God. play an Elder Gagaroth. Oh man, so five mana, Vigilance, Rage, Trample. In a, whenever it attacks, you create a 3-3 three, three beast or you gain three life or you draw a card. For five mana, yes. Five mana, why not? This is peak 2020 design. Not only that, but I'll gain a life because a creature entered the battlefield. Oh yeah, of course. Back up to 17. You're gonna pay for those shock lands somehow. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I will not attack my innkeeper into your other born. Solid so choice. I'll pass the turn to you. Carl, it's swamp time. My curve enables Nykthos really nicely. I still want to keep it back as long as possible. Uh, so Carl doesn't know about it yet because that might incentivize him to take care of my board somehow. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to tap three to play one of the most exciting cards that have been added to Pioneer for three mana. Underworld Dreams. <laughs> 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 it has shaked the metagame. <laughs> <laughs> three mana enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player. All right, facing down a 6-6, six, six, I feel like Death Touch is very nice to have on board. So I now have the choice between being mana efficient and developing my devotion more effectively by deploying Underworld Dreams, or being board efficient, I'd call it, by uh, playing the second Death Touch creature, kind of defending myself against the Onslaught. I think the Gargaroth is not threatening enough for me to care that much about it, so I'm just gonna develop my devotion using the Underworld Dreams. How do you like drawing cards with your thingy now? I thought you were playing a mid-range deck. Why are you doing this? Well, we're gonna find out later. This was a card was, as a kid. I looked at this and was like, how do you beat this? Yeah, impossible. how do you beat this? Impossible. This effect for three mana, <laughs> absolutely impossible. To show you how impossible it is, I'll pass the turn. <laughs> All right. Upkeep. <laughs> oh, there's triggers. I go to 16. Not, uh, not in the upkeep. Do you do anything in the upkeep? Do you have no. any answer? You're just hopeless. Uh, correct. Yeah, you're I would hopeless. like to draw. You, you will go to draw I 16. to my fate. I would like to go to attacks. Okay. I would like to attack you with an Eld Elder Gargaroth. Okay. Although I would like to draw, just to show you how I don't care about the police, I am gonna make a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. So I'm a bit astonished by this attack. I'm full of surprises. I really would have liked you not to attack there. And I'm gonna take it. I know not blocking here seems weird, but I just have to keep my devotion around uh, because then Nyxos does really unfair things. Okay, well, I'm really happy you didn't block it. Because now, I'll take two. Okay, 14. And I get to have twins. Congratulations, oh, Carl. Oh my goodness. I'll play another Elder Galgara. What a mid-range joke that I will is. also gain a life. Oh, and I gain a life for the beast. I'll pass it to you. All right. I'll untap. I will draw a card. Um, for now, I guess I'll play Nykthos. I'll generate six mana. Very nice. I will cast... Another gifted Aetherborn. I have twins too! No, yes! Down to four mana, and I'll tap one more, and I'll play the five mana permanent that everyone expects on five mana out of this deck. Any guesses? I would say Great Merchant of Axfidel, but oh. I assume... It is Great Merchant oh, of okay. <laughs> <laughs> You get them with a double joke. <laughs> uh, which, in total, drains you for ten. That's a swing. I go to six. You go to twenty-three. Indeed. 
It hits a little bit harder now. Yeah. Your underworld dreams. It does. I'll on top. I'll have to draw. Ding! Down to five. Down to five. How about you draw some more cards with that Elder Gargaroth? So currently, if you play another Grey Merchant, I'm dead. You are! You're, you're very happy about that, Yami. I am. <laughs> um, so I'm going to tap four. I'm going to play a card you probably never played against. A Fleetfoot Dancer. I gain oh, one life. Oh no! Um, it's it's not got a lot of text, but I'll still give it a read. It's a four mana four four with trample, lifelink, and haste. Okay. You have three blockers. I do. I'm so sorry. We're gonna have to do the bad thing. It's so sad. I know the Elder Gargaroths are very powerful, but Yemen has two Death Touchers and they're not going anywhere. We will have to attack into them eventually, and I'm really scared of Yemen's devotion right now because my life total is getting pretty low if he has another Grey Merchant. So we're gonna attack with the Gargaroths, we're gonna gain a bit of life. Most importantly, we have a Planeswalker in hand, and that's great value train, but usually we need it on an empty board. Planeswalkers are a lot better if your opponent's on the back foot. I think I'll like to send the Beast in. I'll declare attacks. Yep. I'll attack with the team. I have two triggers. Yeah. I'll gain six life. Wow, all right, up to 12. In that case, I think, Carl, we're here to play a mid-range grind fest. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Uh, so we will have to trade off some resources. Okay, nothing happens. They bounce off. Yeah. They just had a good time. They just took two to tango. Yeah. You'll gain two. I'll gain four. That is correct. Seven. And then I take six plus four is 10. 10. Down to 17. Down to 17. I'll gain four life. You do. 16. Up to 16. And these two die. Had to get through them somehow. You did. They're quite the roadblock. Honestly, after both of us did like insane things, right? Like, oh my god, generating so much mana. Two Gargaroth. It's 16 to 17. You've gained, like, you didn't even draw cards. We traded off some resources. We had a fairly even board state. This is just fair magic. <laughs> fair magic. <laughs> I'll pass it to you. <laughs> All right. I'll untap. I will take my draw. I'll uh, tap two and level up my Warlock class Ooh. to level two. Congratulations. Thank you. And as it becomes level two, I look at the top three cards of my library, pick one, put it into my hand, and the others into my graveyard. So I don't get to know. You don't. Ooh, this is not great. <laughs> oh, no. I, I mean, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, I'll take this one, put two into my graveyard. I'll generate six mana with Nykthos. Mm -hmm. I'll spend one of that on another Warlord class. Okay. I'll spend two of that mana, so leaving three in my pool, mm -hmm. on leveling this up. Oh, you are very much digging here. Take a look at three. Either that or you, you're just acing all your Warlord classes. Man, this really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to pick this one and... Put two thought seasons away. Oh, you don't want to thought season? Me. You don't nah. want to take more damage. You're at 17, though. That's a pretty cozy life total. Yeah, and then I'm gonna cast a Liliana of Ooh. the Veil. Maybe that was the card you were thinking about when when you when I cast that Underworld. It was absolutely Underworld Dreams. Oh, Staple well. of the format. You go sacrifice a creature, Carl. Oh, I've got a few of those. You do. I think I would like to get <laughs> business not doing so well these days. I'm getting rid of my innkeeper. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Anyways, and with that, I'll pass the turn. Both of these Warlord classes trigger, putting you down to 14. I'll draw for turn. I'm going to attack you with these two. Yeah. And Liliana with my Elvish Mystic. I'd like to block the Elvish Mystic. You I'll, take seven. I take seven down, down to, to 10, 10. And you and gain four down up to 18. I'm going to put a Branch Loft Pathway into play and play Vivian. Oh, wow. Um, I may look at the top card in my library anytime. I'll do so now. Hmm, it's nice. Um, and I can play it if it's a creature. Uh, I will take her up. Speaking of creatures, she makes more. Mm. Um, when I take her up, I create a 3-3 green beast creature token, and I put a, my choice of Vigilance, Reach, or a Trample counter on it. Okay. I'll give it Vigilance. All right. And I'll pass it to you. This is looking mighty dangerous. I'll take my draw. First up, uh, I'm, I'm just mastering being <laughs> a Warlock. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll generate 10 mana. Uh, I'll go down to 8 mana to activate my Warlock class again. All right, I'll take a look at the top three cards of my library. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Finding both Shaeldred and Murderous Rider on this Warlock class trigger makes for a tough decision because Shaeldred is an awesome blocker. She threatens Carl and she even stabilizes my life total when I draw cards. Murderous Rider, however, does get rid of Vivian. I'm gonna go with the Rider because I don't think the Vivian can be left unchecked. Otherwise, things will end up badly. I'm gonna take this one. 
Okay. And put these two into the graveyard. There's a Sheldred among them. No, oh, Sheldred is hot right now. First up, we're both gonna discard a card because and that's we have just one. fair game. And with a voice of resurgence. All right. Uh, secondly, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna float a ninth mana. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna play a Liliana, oh. another one, and make you sacrifice a creature. I'm gonna sacrifice this beast. Doesn't have vigilance anyways. Yeah, what a weak beast. And then lastly, I still got six mana, so I'm gonna Murderous Rider <sighs> your Vivian. You'll take two. Down to eight. And then with my remaining three mana, I'm gonna recast this Murderous Rider. Now this was a nice turn, but I am kind of at the mercy of your top deck. So I'll pass the turn. You know what my top decks do? They uh, hurt. <laughs> they do hurt, but first, uh, your Dying Beast hurts even more because you're gonna take three off my Warlock classes. Three, all right. Um, you've got some nice blockers there. I am. I'm still gonna attack you. Um, I'm, yeah, I'll have to try and go for the double block on your 4-4. Four, four. I'm going to deal four to the Grey Merchant. All right. You'll take three. I do, but I also gain two, so but I, only, I gain four. <laughs> I only go down to seven. Yeah, and you are up to eight. a lot of lifelink in this game. Yeah, it's gonna I, last a long time. And I'll just play this because you're gonna make me discard it anyways. True. It's a needle ridge pathway. I'll pass it to you. All right, I got really lucky with you breaking there. I'm gonna untap. Mm -hmm. So Carl, uh, this oh, this might hurt me, but at the same time, it's the thing I have to do. So I'm gonna generate ten mana once again. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I will cast another Underworld Dreams. That well. <laughs> uh, so I'm down to seven mana. Yes. And then I'll spend three of that going down to four mana to draw a card and, and then lose one life. Lose one life, going down to six. I still have four mana in my pool. I'll spend five mana to cast a Meat Hook Massacre Ooh. for X equals three, because I do like my life total. Conveniently. Yeah, both of our creatures die. Vigilant Beast. So whenever a creature I control, dies, you lose one life. And, and whenever one. a creature you control dies, I gain one life. You gain one. So Good. I go to seven, you go to 17. Yes. This one gets put on the bottom of my library. It does. And then at end of turn, my... Th oh, actually, I'll take up Liliana, I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. And then uh, at end of turn, these three triggers, so you go down to 14. And then I draw. You do. And these two trigger. Is this what your deck really does? Is this your payoff? Down I go to 12. 12. Are you just earnestly beating people with Underworld Dreams? Oh, I'm, I'm not being earnest, Carl. This deck is not earnest in um, the slightest. It's my turn to be unlucky. I drew a card oh, count wow, pathway, yeah. and I'll pass it to you. All right, I, I like the sound of that. I really need to stop drawing lands. This game was so close before. Whew. Carl didn't top deck anything threatening. I might be good. Uh, I'll untap. I'll take my draw. <laughs> That's not good. Man! How can I not find a peer into the abyss or another gray merchant? I, I need action. I'll play Swamp. <laughs> I'll tick up Liliana. Yes. I'll activate Nyctos to generate 13 mana by now. <laughs> what Feels a wild good. Card. So stupid that this is legal in Pioneer. Anyways, 13 mana. I'll go down to 10 mana to activate this. Going down mm -hmm. to 6 by and drawing a card. Anyways, I'll go down to 7 mana to just cast this Murderous Rider. No Fair removal. Enough. Just You are. You're, you're honest Yamin. Yeah. And then I'll take up this Warlock class using my remaining seven mana. So now, at the beginning of my end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. Go. I'll draw. I guess you knew what was up. Oh, wow! <laughs> you just see through the sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, I'm gonna play a Fleetfoot Dancer. Sure. I mean, Boinking at you is pretty good, but um, then you just kill her with Liliana. So I'm gonna force you to either lose Lily or the uh, Rider. I'm gonna attack Lily. Um, I feel like it's fine to lose the rider for now. So I'm gonna- You gain two. I, I block. Yeah, go up to eight. I go up to eight, you go up to 16 again. Yep, and Liliana takes one. Exactly, so she's down to two. This goes on the bottom of my library again. It's just a pile of riders. And you lose one life because one of my creatures died. I go to 15. I'll pass it to you. All right, untap. I'll take my draw. Come on! That's not very good. <laughs> so I have to activate Nyxos before. <laughs> we came here to entertain people and all we're doing is dropping land. Yeah. I have to activate my Nyxos before minusing the Lily. That makes sense. So I'm gonna add 13 mana again to mm -hmm. my mana pool. And then go down to 10 mana once again, down to seven life, and draw a card. Come on! It's a nail biter. That's 
a really good one, Carl. It's not. I'll minus the Lily. Okay. Take out the that. The dancer's dead. So I gain one life, up to eight. And then with 10 mana in my mana pool, I don't have enough mana to level both of these up. Anyways, so now both of these are level three. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pass the turn and a creature dies. So you lose three life down to 12. Mm -hmm. And then this resolves you. So far you lost three life, so you lose three life. Okay. Then a nine. And down then a nine. And then this one uh, checks and it sees you having lost six life. You lose six additional life down to three. Those are pretty effective because you know what I'm gonna, you know what's gonna happen now? Yeah, I do. I'm gonna untap. Yep. I'm gonna draw. Yep. I'm gonna take two damage from the underworlds. Down to one. Any life gain, Carl? My Prosperous and Keeper says no. Oh no, it is life gain, it but, is but life it's not gain, life gain, but it's not right life now. gain right now. Um, although you, you can just say untap and say go, I'll still let you do that even if you want to. All right. I'm gonna create a treasure and pass the turn. Let's see what fancy things I can do. I will untap, I will draw. <laughs> Would you like to see my hand, Carl? Yes. It's a swamp and a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> just just end it here. <laughs> I'll level up my warlock class. <laughs> Passing the turn. I'll draw and take two. Aww. It was one. <laughs> <laughs> what a game. <laughs> For sideboarding, there's a fair amount of removal I could bring in, but I don't want to overdo it to cut my devotion too low. So I'm only bringing in two Noxious Grasp, which should be amazing against the creatures and Vivian. One Liliana the last hope because it's much better than Liliana of the Veil, vale, you know, actually sniping one toughness creatures rather than making Carl sacrifice them. And then also two Lifebane zombies because they add devotion, they're threatening, and they take a card out of Carl's hand. To make room for these cards, I take out one Thoughtseize. I would like to take out more, but on the draw, I have to keep them in. Otherwise, Carl's ramp can take over the game way too quickly. Um, two Liliana of the Veil vale also leave because yes, making Carl sacrifice a 1-1 one, one innkeeper isn't very effective. Uh, alongside one Evolved Sleeper and one Murderous Rider, those just, you know, being generic cuts. I don't know a lot about Yaman's deck, even though I saw a whole game worth of it. Um, but we know two things. We know he has one for one removal and that it dirtles late game. And I, just, I don't want to see what his payoff is. Uh, so we have to take out the things that just die to one for one removal. Elder Gargaroths are great, but if I slap one down and he minuses a Liliana, he can just eat it up. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to go under him. Go under his underworld three mana enchantments and warlock classes. So we're going to cut down our top end. We're taking out Vivian on the hunt. We're taking out all the other Galgaroths, and we're taking out two of the Brutal Cathar, uh, just because he doesn't have a lot of creatures. It's good against the Gary, but we don't want the Gary to enter the battlefield again. He kills my Cathar. We're taking those out and bringing in a bunch of three drops. We just want to go around him, make it a little bit slower, and attack really, really fast. So we're bringing in two Knight of Autumn because they destroy enchantments. It's really good. It seems really powerful against Yamin. Also, they're a three drop. We want them. We're bringing in three Elite Spellbinder because He's got expensive spells in his hand. We want them to be more expensive. We just want him on the back foot. And we're bringing in one Archon of Amiria. Uh, we have more, but I don't think we need all of them. And we only have so many slots in our deck to bring cards in. Are you ready? Absolutely. I have the play again, because I lost to your... I still don't know what's going on on <laughs> your side of the board. I mean, I'm, I'm, you could probably just call it Devotion. I, I would. Yeah, I guess Devotion's correct. So, good luck. And to you. Okay, here goes attempt number two. Welcome to Three Drop City! <laughs> We're just gonna play Three Drops. It's pretty good, we'll keep it. My first hand was awesome. This hand's still awesome. The only thing this is missing is a Warlock class on turn one to maximize my devotion, but come on, I can't complain here. I think I can keep this, Yaman. All right, yeah, mine's great too. Yeah, it was, it was great last game as well. Um, almost, this is the Twilight Zone. It's almost the same turn one. I play a Tougher Green and I play Llanowar Elves. All right, last time it was an Elvish Mystic. Though. It was. I'll untap, take my draw, play a Swamp. Oh, this is an unusual feeling for me, Carl. I don't have a Warlock class. <laughs> I'll draw. I will play a Needle Verge Pathway. I'll tap these two. Yep. I'm not attacking you with you this time. Oh, Generating man. a mana. Mana ramp's unfair, Carl. We agreed no ramp. And I will play a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Oh. And there's a Battlefield with a goblin. This one's a very wealthy goblin because when it attacks, it creates a treasure token. Yeah. Um, and this will start on one. Oof, that's a good card, Carl. I'd read it for you, Yeah. but uh, 
Puedes descartar <laughs> hasta dos cartas. Si lo haces, roba a esa misma cantidad, descartas. I think I still know what it does, though. Yeah, I feel like... All right, I'll pass the turn to you. All right. I'll untap. I will play a castle lock, Thwain. And here comes a familiar face. It's a gifted ether. <sighs> I'm not a fan of that face. I'm a big fan of that face. Go ahead. I'll untap. I will draw. This will go to two. Hmm. I will discard two cards yep. and then draw two cards. Sure. I will discard a Vivian on the hunt and this land. All right. I'll draw two cards. <laughs> yeah, you do. This Netherborn is so annoying. Would you like to attack? <laughs> no, I don't want to. I would like the treasure, but I wouldn't like the attacking that is involved yeah. with it. I'm going to play a Prosperous and Keeper. Okay. He'll come with a treasure. Don't even need to get it. Sacking the treasure. Ooh, wow. Rack the riches. I'm going to take two. Sacking the treasure to make a Paolo Vito da Rosa. Oh, no. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I'll gain one life because he enters the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, it's actually called an Elise Spellbinder. I don't need to explain it. It was right Paula's now. invitational card. <sighs> Man, I hate it when I have to review my hand. I, I can react to all your stuff so nicely. It's such a nice hand I have here. Oh wow, that is a very nice hand. Although taking the removal spell would be really good because I have a Planeswalker and I do want it to stick around, I'm gonna have to take the, out the Meat Hook Massacre. It just deals with as many permanents as possible and it adds too much value. Uh, we're not taking it out, we're just delaying it. I think your Meat Hook Massacre is gonna have to go. Obviously. All right, so this costs two more now. Uh, Spellbinder is like the worst thing to see here. It efficiently threatens my Liliana. It makes my plan of Meat Hook Massacring all of Carl's little creatures away out of rage because now Meat Hook Massacre costs four to even deploy. It is truly terrible. Threatening Liliana takes away my devotion. <sighs> Elite Spellbinder is such a broken card. I'm gonna. You you actually seem so unhappy that I feel I feel bad for testing <laughs> it now. I just have to play this Warlock class. You're obsessed with those. I am, and activate it. Oh, this is not good. Uh, once again, these three cards aren't great to see. This is, this is the opposite of what I needed to hit off the Warlock class. I needed efficient cards and I find two lands and a five mana spell. I'm gonna pick this one and put two lands into my graveyard. Go ahead. I'll untap, I can't, I can't wait for my turn. I'll draw, um, the story's over. Yeah. The big bang is that I get a 2-2 two -two if I pay one and tap it. I can copy a creature until end of turn. I feel like it's just boinking time. I'm gonna boink you for three. Yeah, down to 17. And then I'll take two. You're not the only one taking damage here. Yeah, down to 17. And I'll oh. have four, five. No, it's not a Gargaroth or anything. It's a Vivian. Oh, it's, it's just a Vivian. It's a Vivian. You know. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and plus her, which gets a beast. And I think this time it'll also have Vigilance. And because Vivian said it's okay, I'm gonna look at the top card of my library. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll pass it to you. My curve has become so bad. I just have to deploy Lifebane Zombie here. So the plan is play Lifebane Zombie, next turn attack Vivian, and then Meat Hook Massacre everything away because as long as all my creatures stick around, I have enough devotion to cast it. This is very vulnerable and Carl might just go crazy with Vivian. So I feel far behind here. I'm gonna cast a Lifebane Zombie. Oh, that's a good one. It's not. Uh, at least it hits. It does. I have a Night of um in my hand. Gets exiled. I'll untap. I will draw. I don't take one because you don't have the Underworld Dreams. Yeah. I get to look at the top card in my library. You do. Very nice. Uh, I can imagine. Oh, I can <laughs> imagine how nice it feels to have a Planeswalker. So I'm gonna tap and pay one. Yeah. And I would like to make a copy of Elite Spellbinder. Yeah, no worries. Absolutely, you got it. I don't have a copy token, but no offense to Apollo. Just, I'll use this Rhino. I hope he's not watching this. <laughs> There you go. Oh, two gray merchants. Two gray merchants. Um, so those are redundant, but gain a lot of life. I feel like I would like to take the Noxious Grasp. Yep. It's under it's, that. It's not taken, it'll just, it's more expensive. And I think I'll go to attacking time. Sure. First you gain one life though off the yes. innkeeper. 19. And then I'll attack with my Vigilant, Beast, and the two Paolos. Uh, yeah. Can't block those, so take nine. And then, so the deck is from a commenter, and I'm just discovering it as I'm playing it, and it seems so fun. So I, I don't know what I'm gonna get with this. I will minus Vivian, yeah. but I'm sure it will be worth it. Uh, I'll play an Arcan of Emeria, 
It's fine. Uh. You can't cast more than one spell each turn. And it's, it's okay, they cost more anyways. And non-basic lands your opponent's control into the battlefield tapped. Uh. I have a trigger as it's cast. Yeah. Because Vivian will allow me to go get a card that costs two or less, a creature, and put it into the battlefield. Yeah. Kyle minusing Vivian is very good for me because that makes my Lifebane Zombie lethal for the Vivian and then I can hopefully sweep the board. It's still not a good spot, but I see how I can get back into this. So I do feel like you might wipe the board at some point. So I'm gonna get a Voice Resurgence. Sure you do. I gain two life. You do. Um, this board is a mess. So I'm just gonna organize it a little bit and pass it to you. All right. Paulo dies. Paulo. Well. No, please, no. His reflection. Uh, oh, Paulo. Paulo's reflection is gone. All right, I will draw. I think a swamp might be nice. I'm not sure. Okay, this card's also fine. I have one thing that I can do. I'll attack Vivian She's because gone. Intimidate is a fun mechanic Wait. that they don't do anymore. It can only be blocked by artifact creatures or black creatures. Yay. I don't have artifact. Vivian is dead. And then I'll activate Nykthos, adding five mana. And I'll tap, cast Lock Twain to add a final six. And I'm gonna cast this Meat Hook Massacre mm -hmm. for X equals two because that's what I have to do. Bars. No, very um, <laughs> Yeah. I lose six creatures. Yep, I gain six life, up to 14. I lose one creature, you lose one life, down then to 20. 20. Now, when my Voice of Resurgent dies, I get a token. You do. It's currently a 3-3. Three, three. This Goblin Shaman never made any treasures. Yeah, no. And that's my turn, Carl. It was a big turn. Um, all on top. Actually, at end of turn, you lose one more life because of the Warlock. <laughs> I've been attending Poppy. my lesson. <laughs> yes. I'll draw for turn. Yep. I'll attack you with the lot. Uh, I'll have to block that voice of Sir, Do I? Do I have to block, Carl? Yeah, I think blocking is good. I think blocking is a solid idea. All right. So I take you, five. But you gain two. I gain two. So you take three, you exactly. go down 11. To 11. And we both lose a creature, so I go to 12, and you go... 18. Exactly. And uh, I'll play this tap. Oh! Uh, as uh, advantage and pass it to you. Let's go. Yes! Carl bricked again. This gives me time to stabilize and to build up the board of my own. Um, I'll untap, take my draw. Go ahead, Carl. I don't care. But you have so much mana. I do. I'll untap. I'll draw. Yep. I attack you with Archon of Maria and my beast. Uh, oh, no. Any effects before damage? I, I don't know. So. Uh, I'm, I'm playing a Naya deck. <laughs> I'm gonna Noxious Grasp the Archon, because no. it's really annoying. Uh, uh, so I gain one life here. Off and the one life of the Meat Pack Massacre. Exactly. And then you take three, down 11. Yep. And I don't know what kind of voodoo magic you've been pulling, but I'll play a <laughs> branch off halfway. <laughs> this is mad. This is, I, I, I mean, I could hand another creature, but still, like, I'm I'll pass very it fortunate. You. I'll untap, um, I'll draw. Still no land, but I mean, at this point, this is the kind of board that Iliana really shines yes. on. Are you gonna. I'm gonna take it. Oh. Nah, nah, nah. Very clever, man. And because I'm a very uh, engaging student, I don't know. I engage with all of my classes. They're like, dude, it's the fifth time you are <laughs> yeah. in this class. I gain one life because one of your creatures died. Yep. Go up to 12. And then at end of turn, because a creature died, both of those warlock classes will deal one damage to you each, down to 16. I go to 16. Go. I'll draw. The voodoo magic is over. No more voodoo. I would like to cast a foot dancer. Yeah. Um, now it's attacking. <laughs> <And> it's attacking. <laughs> but we, we don't know who. But we, we don't know where yet. Um, I, I will be attacking the Liliana. Yeah, I think. Taking, you'll gain four, you go, I go to 20. Yep. And the turn's yours. Those dancers have just been a steady stream of life. It's funny because you'd think against the removal deck, a four thing that has no enter the battlefield effects wouldn't be that good, but they've been pretty good. You know what else is pretty good? Drawing a swamp. Oh. Very strong. Is it time to deploy the Grey Merchant? I'll activate War Warlock You class. love doing that. I do. One, two, three. I'll grab myself an Evolved Sleeper. I don't have to tell you this, but uh, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> it anyways, because I'm gonna activate Nykthos to add four mana, mm -hmm. and then spend one of that mm. to cast the Sleeper. You even have three mana if you want to activate it twice. I do. Uh, now, Evolved Sleeper, a new one. One mana, one one. Uh, for one additional mana, it becomes a two two. For two additional mana, it becomes a three three. 
and it gets Death Touch. And then, if it is a 3-3, like if it is a Phyrexian, I can pay three mana as much as I want, put one plus one plus one counter on it, and then draw a card and lose one life. So right now, not that powerful. Later on, very powerful. I might use that uh, three mana to activate it, but I won't. I'll instead Murderous Rider your Death Touch. It does, it does a very similar thing. Um, but doesn't lose your sleeper. So you I lose first two, right? lose two, and then I gain one, so I go down to 11. Mm -hmm. And at end of turn, you lose one life for each Warlock class, because oh. a creature died. <laughs> They're really pulling their weight. Uh, it's my turn? It is. I'll draw. It's not a bad one. I'll play Nessica's Chariot. It comes with two cats. This is just Winota without Winota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so secretly, uh, in Winota, everyone was busy being afraid of Winota, yeah. and you got them with a cat boat. It's you not did. a boat, it's a chariot. Um, I'll get two cats. They're cute. These are some of the most majestic tokens. All right, so that's quite the board you've built out of nowhere, but that's also a lot of fodder for the Meat Hook Massacre. I, I will first activate Nykthos, generating five mana, mm -hmm. which makes me play... I'll play Shale Dread. Uh, there's one mana floating. I'll use that to level this up once. So no, it's just a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, it's just a 2-2 two -two now. That's my turn. Pretty good. Children has been a 4-5. Blocks my chariot for days. Yep. I'll on top. I'll draw. Are you crewing? I'll crew the chariot. You madman. I am. I'll attack you with the chariot. It's gonna make another token. All right. Boink. Boink. May I block? If you want to. Uh, by the way, you took two damage off the card you drew there. I'll block. Ah, uh, you're so good at calling bluffs. Yeah. It dies. Okay. I'll play another one. Okay. I ran out of cat tokens, so do you think they'll notice? I, I don't know, no. Uh, they can, what is this, a beast? It can just blend in. All right. And I'll pass the turn to you. Hmm. That's a mighty board you have there, Carl. Um, but I don't think your board is scary enough to waste removal, Carl. All right, I'll draw a card. Uh, so I gain, first I gain two life. Yes, 13. 13. Is it so, another Warlock class? So I saw, <laughs> it is. No, I saw this deck as a deck tech on Card Market Inside. Toby published that, right? And I was like, I have to play this. This is so fun. I'm going to generate three, five, seven mana. Okay. Which is convenient because I need seven mana for a peer into the abyss. <laughs> Target player draws half their library, rounded up, and loses half their life, rounded up. I know this card and I still don't understand. So, so far, I've had so much information about going on. I still don't know who you're going to target with this. You. I feel, uh, yeah, I guess I had a hunch. Um, so I just... You just draw a bunch. Let's say <gasps> let's say you draw this much. You have shield dread on the board. And then you take two damage, or you lose two life for each for card each you one of these. So you put all of those into your hand, go down to eight, and Great. now there's like 20 triggers on the stack. Let's count it. And 19 cards. So there is 19 triggers on the stack. Would you like to respond? <laughs> I have so many cards. <laughs> you do. You, like you can crew the vehicle. I, I think I would just go down to minus 30. Nice. Good games. Good games. Yeah, man, I guess I got to the bottom of what those underworld dreams are doing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they also provide devotion, but they come in pretty handy with Peer into the Abyss. It's if you want to learn more about this deck, like about the inner workings, go check out Toby's write-up on Card Market Insight. Uh, he published this deck tech as part of our uh, Dominaria like preview kind of deck tech season. Uh, it's in the description and in the pinned comment down below. And if you have your own exciting deck that you want us to play, please leave it in the comments. Either a link to an MTG Goldfish page or just copy paste all the cards down below so we can copy paste it and play it. And then with the full 75, you'll see them on this very channel. But to see them, you should yeah. be subscribed. Yeah, that's the only way that you'll see. I'll show you if we're playing your deck. So it, it helps us, it helps you. Just, just. But for in now, the meantime, that's it. We'll see you guys in the next video.